Hello everyone and Happy New Year! So maybe your New Year's resolution is to learn how to read music more fluently, or to learn to read it in the first place. And today I want to talk about an app that potentially could be useful. So I did an episode many years ago about how to read music, and I think the whole theory is, is to me quite logical and straightforward. But what it really benefits from is drill, is doing a lot of it so it becomes automatic. That rather than having to go crunch, 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 this is a F or a B or a C, you want to see that note and know immediately what it is and where it is. That in many ways is even more important. That you want to see that, okay, this is an E, but really what you want to see is that you see that note on the staff and you know, oh, it's this string. Because on the harp, whether it's flat, natural, or sharp, it's always this string if it's that note on the staff. And not this E or this E, for example, but this particular E. And so I think just repetition can be really helpful that way, and so to do some drill. And these days there's lots of flashcard type apps on your phone or whatever device you want to use, which could display a note on the staff and ask you to identify it. But what I always thought would be wonderful is what if it could display a note on the staff and ask you to play it? Again, tying in that recognition of, of what you see to what you're doing at the instrument. And, and in fact, I, you know, had to have been possible, and in fact it is possible. So the app I'm going to talk about here is called Note Rush, and I think there's maybe a couple other apps that have a similar function, but this is what I'm going to talk about. So let me demonstrate it in action. I'm going to do this little quiz. I'm going to play middle C to start. And now I need to identify this. Let's say I think that it's a G. Or maybe I think it's a C. Maybe it's an E. Oh, no way, I think it's this F. Oh, and it goes on to the next one now. Oh, it's, it's an E. It's a G. It's a D. Middle C. I'm done! Yay! Oh, I got one star. Excellent! So, that, in a nutshell, is what this app can do then, is it can quiz you by saying what note is this, and once you play it correctly, it moves on to the next one. And that kind of repetition, I think, is just so helpful and a really great way to build your sight reading ability, or if you're learning a new clef, like if I were to try to start to learn alto clef more fluently, I can, I can kind of read it, but not very quickly doing something like this would be really, really helpful. So the app is available for both Android and iOS. It's, I think, $9. I should mention I don't have any association with the company. This isn't a sponsored video or anything. I just think it's a, it's a pretty good app with some quirks and potentially, as I say, useful. So what I've done is I've uninstalled it and reinstalled it. So this is what you would see if you were installing it for the first time. I'm, I'm doing it on my iPad. You could do it on your phone. And as I say, it's also available on Android. Okay, so welcome, here we are, what's new? Blah, blah, blah. Let's tap the level selector, okay. Select an instrument. So we're gonna select piano, right? Because piano has both treble and bass. The music on the piano looks exactly like the harp, so that's perfect. We'll tap piano. And then we get a bunch of these presets. So here, up here, we can select, you know, treble, bass, or grand staff. So let's explore the treble. And the first one we have, level zero, is just C and G. Now it's got some sound, we can turn that off, but we've got some sound for the moment. C and G, middle C and treble G. Great, just two different notes we can quiz ourselves on. Press play, press play again. Boom, 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 boom. play middle C. Oh, tap to enable microphone. Right, because I just reinstalled this, and I need to allow it to access my microphone. Yes, I will allow it. Press middle C. Ta-da! Okay. Oh, middle C. Oh, it's G. It's G. Hmm, what is that, I wonder? Hmm. Oh, I wait long enough, it's telling me it's C. Okay. Oh, and I think it heard the C still ringing, so it, it thought we'd played it again. Oh, now I've waited long enough, it's telling me it's a G. And yeah, there. So we see one little quirk there that with a harp, because the harp keeps ringing, it's telling me again, oh, I played a G again. Yes, when it's asking for a G again. Okay, and it gives me a time. Yay, and I could try to beat that. Let's say I press this refresh button. Oh, oh, 
my goodness. Five stars unlocked. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. <laughs> it's all gamified in that sense. So, okay. And then if I'm finished with that, I could tap the home. And it, again, the, it, the, we have this gear thing here. So we can go to seasonal themes. We'll explore that in a moment. Or I think if I tap this, I go back. So it's not entirely clear, right, how to do that. But I, if I tap this, this is level zero, treble. I can go and look at some other ones. Oh, and I see I've gotten a five star there. Let's say that I want to explore the base. And maybe I want to explore, ah, base C to middle C, right? So here it shows me the, the range, which from this C all the way up to this C. Perfect. I'll press play. I'll give it a try. Press this to calibrate. So it's an F. It's a B. Three stars, beautiful. Okay, so then let's look at some of the customization I would recommend potentially on this. So again, we can explore all of these. We've got the whole staff that just ledger lines, for example, this shows us we're just quizzing these ones outside of the, the normal staff, right? Cool. Or uh, accidentals. Now on the harp, I would ignore accidentals, right? Because What's the point? Again, what we want to tie in is knowing that, uh, for example, uh, let me, where, where is this one, F and C, that this note here on the staff is this F string. Doesn't matter whether it's sharp, flat, or natural on the harp, it's this string. And the levers of the pedals tell you whether it's sharp or flat. So I would completely ignore the accidentals on this. They're not really useful to us. Um, we also have the grand staff. So for example, let's say whole staff, this is going to show us a whole range here from this low F all the way up to this G. Let's try that, for example. Okay, middle C on a bass clef, so I'm going to play it with left hand. And F. Oh, and it heard that F again, I think, and thought we'd done it. Yes, it's a B. So at one point, I think when I said something, it thought that was a note and gave me a check mark. Also, a couple times I played the correct string, but it didn't register it, maybe in the all the sort of sound that was happening, and then I had to play it again to have it register. Okay, so we're gonna explore those quirks in a moment. First, I want to go to this gear button and talk about some of the things that you might or might not want to do. So seasonal themes, we can enable that or not. Uh, and Show check mark for correct answer. Okay, we have that on or not. Penalize incorrect guesses. So add five seconds. So I'm of two minds about the gamification of this. Uh, if that works for you, if you find yourself incentivized to like get a higher score, great. I would say in some ways it trains us to maybe use bad technique because we're just scrambling to get the string without maybe playing it the way we might want to play it with a little bit of preparation and nice form. Again, we're wanting to really tie in what we see to where it is on the harp, but it doesn't need to be <gasps> super fast, but it might be that it's a good incentive for you. So up to you. So the penalize incorrect answer guesses is great if you're trying to gamify it, but it maybe creates a, some anxiety. The downside of the sort of the time pressure can be a feeling of <gasps> not able to think. And, and uh, for me, I would, I would disable that. The hints. So this is kind of neat. We saw it where it would tell us the name after we didn't get it for a while, or sometimes it'll highlight a nearby note and say, this nearby note is a B. Oh, uh, this must be a C. Up to you whether you want to have them or not. I'm gonna disable it for a moment. MIDI echo is if you're playing this on a MIDI keyboard hooked in, you would hear the sound coming back, which is good if your MIDI keyboard does not 
create sound on its own and sound effects. So do we want that satisfying ding when we get it correctly or not? We certainly don't have to have it on. I'll leave it on for the moment. Um, here, seasonal themes. So here, right now, the default is just normal notes, but we could have it look like this or this or various different themes. Now, that's all well and good, but I, uh, I guess this is an attempt to make it more, more interesting or something, but I, that's not how we're actually going to be reading music. Music is not going to be made up of little fruits or whatever the particular theme we're using is. So, yeah, I mean, that's cool, but I would, I would always just keep it on this, which looks kind of like what we would normally see on music. Then let's explore the level designer because we have all these defaults, right? But we can go to level designer and create our own. So let's give an example of that. Let's say we want to work on the treble clef. And let's say that we're finding that this region up here, maybe from this C to the G, we want to work on that. So we can, whoop, we can select I don't know if there's a better way to do it, but we can select those five notes and say check mark. And then somewhere we, we have to be able to tell it how many repetitions. There we are. So while we're selecting, so while we're selecting which notes we want to get quizzed on, we can click this gear and say how many repetitions. So the number of notes that we've selected, five in this case, if we just select one repetition, it will quiz us on five different notes within that range, and then it'll be over. So if we wanted to go on longer, we have to up the repetitions. Let's say we up it to three. So that's going to mean it'll quiz us for 15 notes. There we are. We could name it something if we wanted. I'm just going to leave it like this. And let's try it now. So that was a fairly decent number of, of repetitions. Uh, I will say, by the way, that to get the four, five star really requires uh, a, often a very fast speed that, again, I think is maybe faster than ideal in terms of just feeling relaxed, that it's not a stressful thing. And, and yeah, but anyway, up to you. Like, it could be a good incentive, could be something you want to totally ignore. So as you can see, that can be a really, really nice uh, let's see how we get back to that. Um, this, I think, right? Yeah. A neat way to create something that, again, maybe you want to work on the bass clef and maybe you want to work on you know, a certain region. And again, to do the number of repetitions to help it go on long enough to make it useful. And yeah, some, so really some nice customizability that way. Let's uh, finally, yes, we won't, we won't say that one. Finally, let's, let's, we'll go back to one of the presets and I, I want to just talk about some of the quirks and maybe the, the downsides of it. So let's try the bass, for example. We'll try this, maybe this down here, sure. So again, as you saw, one of the problems is that sometimes it can get false positives. So let's test here, for example, if we play a higher G, that's not ideal. Here's an A, let's try a higher A. Or a lower A. Higher A. Oh, that one it did, right? So some of the some of the resonance or the overtones caused it to think that this A was this A. Here's this C. this F. Uh, so again, maybe, maybe with this A, let's muffle down here. Or that's pretty good. 
What I found was on, for example, my harpsicle, it was very accurate. It would not give false positives and it would also not give false negatives. Ah, I'll talk about that in a moment. So um, that it, the I think the smaller size and the less resonant bass, we don't have all this extra sympathetic vibration going on, helps that way. On the pedal harp, I found in the bass, I had to kind of do a, an open thumb and a very short, sharp attack sometimes to make it pick it up. So I would get a false negative. I would play the correct string, but it would not register. I would just think it was some sort of mush, this sound there, there. That So to try to make it very distinct. So again, I think the lower on the bass, and you think about tuning apps often have a hard time picking up some of the lower bass notes. And then finally, I think the voice can sometimes create a false positive. And I, I had this, I was showing this to somebody and we were talking and suddenly bing, 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 it thinks we're getting correct, correct, correct notes. And we've seen that a couple of times during this, this filming where I think it's registered my voice and thought it was the note that we were trying to find. But in general, in general, it's pretty good. Now I have the advantage of knowing, like if I play a note that is the correct note and it doesn't immediately register as the correct note, I know that I played the correct note because I know how to read music. Um, so that is that advantage. It hasn't bothered me, but if you felt very uncertain about reading music, it obviously you don't want to have that situation where you play the correct string and then it doesn't give you the, the, the tell you that that's the correct note. But in general, I think it's a really intriguing way to sort of quiz yourself and practice reading music. And again, it could be reading music in general. It could be reading a particular clef if you're accustomed to bass clef or treble clef, getting used to the other one. And again, again getting used to that idea that it's not just the name of the note, but it's the, it's the exact, you know, it's, is it this C or this C or this C or this C? And it's the exact string that tying that visual on the page to the string, that, that particular string on the harp. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you know of any other apps that do a similar thing. And hope you enjoyed that. Have a wonderful 2024, and I look forward to a bunch more Harp Tuesday episodes coming up. <laughs> Cheers.